Uh, well, I was born in Israel, raised in Israel, in Jerusalem. My family is like eighth generation in Jerusalem. And my father's side is one of uh, the family from my father's side, Isakarov, is one of the founders of the Bukharian neighborhood, which is one of the first ones that were built outside the walls. Uh, the mother's side is coming from uh, Kurdistan, um, in between the area of Iraq, Syria, Turkey, Iran. Uh, they came around 1920s, early 1920s. They also have uh, a kind of a very traditional background with a synagogue that they built in Givat Shaul neighborhood, uh, the west side of Jerusalem. And, uh, you know, I live in Tel Aviv for the last 15, 16 years, but I still call myself a Jerusalemite. Uh, it's Jerusalem. It's Jerusalem of the late 70s and the beginning of the 80s. So, of course, yes, it's all around people from the east side, from the west side together. It was the three days of the first uprising, the first intifada. So there was no real um, tension. Well, there was always this tension, but it wasn't that bad. And I think that uh, I grew up uh, hearing Arabic around me. And my grandma, my mom. My sister, my elder sister, they all speak Arabic. Don't ask me how, but they do. And uh, even I, as a kid, I learned a few words in Arabic, and I had the accent. So, yeah. So, to be honest about that, you know, I didn't have this dream of becoming a TV creator or having a TV show. It wasn't, it didn't exist in, you know, the on the radar of the dreams that you dream at night. That wasn't my first choice uh, and if you ask me what did I want to be I wanted to become a soccer player uh, there was one specific guy that I really admired his name is Uri Malmilian number eight in Betar Yerushalayim my favorite soccer team and uh, this is more or less where my my dreams uh, uh, summed up back then but uh, after a while of course when I became a journalist you understand that you're very good in storytelling and you understand that there's a story that wasn't told till today, which is the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, but in another version of it. Meaning, not the things that you hear in the news, not the things that you will see in the TV news reports coming out of, out of Israel and the West Bank and Gaza Strip, but things that you usually are not used to. And that brought me to a meeting, by accidental meeting with Lee Oraz, my co-creator, um, he's the head character of Fauda, of course, and he's a very good friend of mine. I would say brothers would be a better definition for Leo and myself. And we knew each other since we were 16. But in 2010 we met again at some kind of a very awkward meeting, but uh, it was interesting and funny. And from there, from that meeting, uh, started the idea of having a TV show. I think that many of the stories that you would see in Fauda are based upon our experiences. And my experiences as a journalist, his experiences as a soldier on the ground, personal experiences outside of the service, uh, outside of journalism, stories that we had seen in the news that we picked and took and mixed it in our plot. So it's not that Fauda is based upon one man's experiences. It's not that Fauda is based upon two or three or ten. I would say that it's the story of uh, so many different people and this is part of the reason why so many people in Israel, whether they're Palestinians or Israelis, like so much this TV show. They feel as if it's it's theirs. They feel as if they were there on the ground when it happened. Primarily, you're talking about two Israeli Jew Jerusalemites um, wild characters that do not have real plans. We didn't have strategy. It's not that when we started this project we thought, oh, wow, let's tell the story of the israeli palestinian conflict. If, to be honest, you know, we just wanted to have fun. And it was, like, we treated it from right from the, the beginning, right from the first thing, is like, hey, let's do this thing together. It sounds like fun. And it was fun. Uh, we met a, a scriptwriter who taught us a lot and uh, he went with us all the way in the first season. Then we, st we switched to another one in the second season. In the third season, we have a, a new scriptwriter. And the work, 
the memories, the stories that we brought, and sitting there, sometimes it's like arguing and fighting and screaming at each other, but it's great and it's wonderful. And I feel that, you know, for me, Fauda is a real baby. For me, Fauda is something real. I, I find it very different than other TV shows, uh, including ones that we are writing right now in the U.S. for Netflix. But it's different. Even the way of Fauda is chaotic. It's chaos. Like, to be there on the set, you have to understand there's a different beat, there's a different rhythm, there's a different energy for people that are there on the ground. And every hour, although it's a very planned production, something changed. Something uh, that it's fouled up. Suddenly it's uh, terminated and cancelled and you have to uh, improvise and to find something else. And it's just making everything better. Like a stalk of hair is getting into the frame. So you do not stop the, the shooting while the, the herd is going, but the opposite, you use it in order to make it more authentic. And that's just one slight small example. Listen, then again, <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to exaggerate here, but we didn't think that anyone would watch it. We didn't think that anyone would pick it. And at the beginning, no one picked it. No, no one wanted it in Israel. Uh, then we found Yes, and Yes said Yes, yes, satellite television, they, we should give them the credit for that because they were brave enough to take those two crazy Jerusalemites and to, to give them a chance to write a TV show with no background. And again, um, and after that, uh, when Yes started to broadcast it, to air it, it was pretty surprising for us that people in Israel watched it because you would think that the issue of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict uh, it's kind of a non-issue in Israel. I mean, just look at the current elections in Israel. No one talks about the Palestinian issue. And in Israel also, it's considered to be like the most unsexiest issue on earth, like a killer, like something that you, if you would watch, you would fall asleep immediately. Why? Because it's, it's there. It's on your daily life. You open up the window and you have the Israeli-Palestinian conflict out there. So we didn't think that many people would watch it. We were shocked and surprised that they did. And then came Netflix. And Netflix took it and spread it all over the place and suddenly people all over the world watch Fauda. Of course we were surprised <laughs> by that. Come on. Like uh, one day we got a phone call that uh, yes, uh, someone named Dana, uh, she, she's in charge of many things and yes, and she gave us a call and said, listen, um, Netflix wants to pick up your show. And we didn't completely understand back then what does it mean, Netflix, how big they are, like it was a few years ago. And then they said that they do not want to, uh, to make an adaptation to, you know, to take Fauda for the American version. But no, they want to keep it that way and broadcast as it is, as an original series by Netflix. And we were shocked, like, why should they, why would they pick up an Israeli show of then again those two Jerusalemites, like it didn't get to, the one on one didn't get to two, but then you know just like in classic mathematics when you get take the one and one and it gets to three, so you understand that suddenly there's something going on here and it's just not like one of those TV shows that has shown all over, but it's becoming a huge hit. I don't think that it really impacts Israeli society in a way that it changed uh, people's minds or views of the, on the politics, not at all. It made people go crazy. I mean, people are going all over. I, I mean, Fauda became the... the I'm sorry if I'm, I, I do not sound modest, but Fauda became like the most successful TV show in Israel today. Um, the minute that you, share, that you say the word Fauda in Israel, it attracts people's mind. Um, you know, when we came up with the trailer for the third season, it was a news alert in Israel. Just like if something happened, you know, a rocket was shot from Gaza, you have a news alert in Israel. A bomb was exploded in Gaza, that you have, not in Gaza, in Israel, you have a, a, a news alert. There's a crisis in politics, you have a news alert. And when Fauda brings a trailer, you have a news alert. So it's, it's becoming ridiculous. It's really, it's, uh, it's funny, it's great. I must say that, you know, sometimes it's, uh, I need to pinch myself and feel that it's real. 
and it's only becoming worse and worse, meaning better and better and better. You know, more and more people are in love with the show. The ones that didn't see it now watch it, and thank God. No. <laughs> But uh, yeah, <laughs> but I can say that it deals with uh, very realistic uh, events that would make you feel as if uh, we followed the news. It's not like that. We rewrote it sometimes, and the news then came and followed us. But it deals a lot with Gaza, and it deals a lot with um, you know the way that innocent people are getting involved in this conflict, although they didn't want to. Same answer, I would say, that it didn't change people's minds, then again. I think that it opened up people's eyes, it opened up people's ears and made, made them think, is this possible, is this real? Maybe the Israelis do look like that, maybe the Palestinians do look like that, in both sides. Whether it's Israelis, Palestinians, uh, outsiders, internationalists, it made people think, and this is why I'm so happy for this uh, project of ours. Yes, I was attacked by a group of uh, Palestinian demonstrators outside of Ramallah. Did it affect my writing? Not at all. Did it affect my uh, way of work? In a way, yes, because I stopped going for demonstrations. But then again, it didn't change my routine of going and visiting the West Bank or talking to Palestinians. Not at all. At the end of the day, let's keep in mind, I was saved by two Palestinians that were there. Uh, not really, not really. I think that most of the security agencies are pretty much happy with Fauda and uh, what is happening with it. And um, because they found it a very good drama, um, they understand, we understand that we didn't uh, publish anything that was secret. Well, um, Professor Asher Sassel is one of the most brilliant minds in Middle Eastern studies, if you ask me. He taught me for my master's degree in Tel Aviv University. And, you know, he made me feel like I want to become a professor. And after a few years, I did become a teacher in Tel Aviv University, the same school, meaning Middle East school. Um, and specifically with uh, Professor Sassel, I remember that I wrote uh, a paper very long one that really affected my work as a journalist, which was about uh, Dir Yassin myth and massacre. The myth and reality and the way that they mixed and the way that sometimes, you know, um, myth serves the interests of both sides. Uh, meaning, you know, Dir Yassin was a kind of a crucial event in the drama of 1948 relations between Jews and, and Arabs. And it's quite fascinating to see how both sides used the real facts that happened on the ground and made it a much bigger story just in order to, to serve their own political interests. Look, I'm a true believer in realistic characters, in realistic stories, and not about you know, total fiction and total drama. You know, sometimes the, the less screenplay uh, script would be much more authentic and strong than the one that is being written by the book. So I think that my tip for the future writers or creators is try to be real, try to be authentic. Don't, don't under-exaggerate your audience. I think that the audience, at the end of the day, although we tend to, to think that, you know, maybe the audience wants to just see action and drama. Sometimes I just want to see something realistic. Of course there's some level of exaggeration. Listen, this is drama at the end of the day. And yes, there is a sense of realism in what we show in Fauda, but don't, uh, for just one second even, don't think that this is real. It's not realism. We're trying to make it realistic as possible, but it's not reality. Otherwise, we've been a news show. Um, so, of course, we create a bigger drama, we create bigger action. Sometimes it's not as big as in reality, because sometimes reality is much more crazier and wilder, and etc., etc., and we don't have enough budget in order to show reality as it is. 
So I think that at the end, you know, it's fiction, and we have to keep that in mind. Um, I spent a few years in Tel Aviv University in my master's degree, which were great and cool and nice. And uh, then I taught in the university, Middle Eastern studies, about media, about uh, two uprisings. For me, it was a very strong experience to teach more than anything else. I think that I loved it. I loved to open up the eyes of the students. I loved to the, the students opening up my eyes. And for me, Tel Aviv University is always a very special place of learning and teaching and knowing more about the Middle East. I'm Avi Zakharov and you're watching JTV. To stay up to date with JTV content, click subscribe here if you're on YouTube and hit the alarm bell. And if you're on Facebook, hit the like button and under following, click see first. If you enjoy watching JTV content and want to help us continue to grow, please consider making a donation to us by clicking here.